fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. The Lone Ranger was fighting for his life. It was a fight against fever and infection, resulting from a bullet wound. He lay in the ranch house of his friend Clarabelle Hornblow. Clarabelle and Thunder Martin, her top hand, did what they could to aid Tonto in caring for the wounded man. Meanwhile, they hoped that enemies in the nearby town would not learn of his helplessness. In the town, the usual evening crowd had gathered in the Silver King Cafe. And in a small back room... Three men sat around a table. One of the men was an Indian, but he spoke English as well as either of his companions. His name was Joe Reno. Joe, how much longer are you going to wait for Cleve? What's the matter, Baldy? You getting impatient? No, but he's late. Cleve will be here. Oh, that must be... Sit still. I'll open it. Howdy, Cleve. Come on in. Say here, Joe, what kind of deal are you trying to hand me? You'll hear all about it. You know Baldy Lennox? Yeah. Hello, oh, Baldy. Howdy. <laughs> I see you're wearing an empty holster, same as I am. Yeah. The barkeep made me hand over my gun before he'd tell me where to find Joe Reno. Then he made me go around the outside of the building instead of through the cafe to this room. Said I should rap three times on the back door. I had to do the same thing, Cleve. Well, I don't like it. I feel half-dressed without a gun. That'll do. Huh? The barkeep was acting on my instructions. If you don't like what I do, clear up. If you stay here, you'll take orders from me. Joe, you're wearing a gun. I like to be the only man armed when I'm dealing with professional gunslingers. You'll get your gun after this meeting. I don't know this gent. Is he a gunslinger? Oh, he's my partner on this deal. Shake hands with Lefty Lee. Howdy. Howdy, Cleve. I've heard a lot about you. What's the deal? Does Baldy know about it? Not yet. Sit down. <coughs> now, first of all, Cleve, you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? Heard of him? 
That's a fool question. My best pals are in jail because of him. All right, so you've heard of the Lone Ranger. You ever heard of Lefty Lee? No. Lefty works in the Western Union Telegraph office. What about it? You tell it, Lefty. Well, a few days ago, a woman came into the office. Her name's Clarabelle Hornblow. She owns a ranch a few miles from here. I was sitting at the instrument table when she came in and started pounding on the counter with a fist. Hey there, young feller. I've got to send an important message to Washington, D.C. Now, how about stepping lively? All right, man. Uh, just write out your message. It's all written out. Here you are. There's the name and address at the top. Yes, ma'am. Hey. This is one of the most important men in Washington. What about it? Uh, nothing. Figure the charges and I'll pay you. Then start pounding that key. What's your name? Claire Bell Hornblow. What's yours? <laughs> well, Lefty Lee, but my name doesn't matter. I, I just want to know how to sign this message. Well, there's two initials at the bottom of the paper. You just sign it like that. The gent who gets it will know who it's from. Now count the words and figure the charges. Well, I sent that message. I knew it was important, so I made a copy of it and showed it to Joe Reno. He learned a few more facts. Yeah, the top hand at the Hornblow Ranch came into town. I questioned him without arousing any suspicion. And I learned all I needed to know. What's that? That message was sent by the Lone Ranger. What? He Lone has Ranger. some important government papers in his possession. He was supposed to deliver them to someone. I don't know who. He sent word to Washington that he couldn't deliver the papers because he's badly wounded. A Lone Ranger? Wounded? Yeah. And he's at the Hornblow Ranch House. I'd like to get my hands on him. How many cowpokes does that woman have? Just one. The top hand. His name is Martin. The only other man around the place is the Lone Ranger's engine pal. Then the four of us could handle the situation. We could get the Lone Ranger. We'll take him alive. And we'll also take those secret government papers. What good are they? Listen, if they're as important as I think, the government will play plenty to get them back. With those papers and the life of the Lone Ranger in our hands, we'll be able to drive a hard bargain. How much cash in it for each of us? Plenty. But there'll be more than cash. What? You and Baldy are wanted for mail robbery, Cleve. Oh, so you know about that. Yeah, I saw the handbills. That's why I didn't want you to walk through the cafe. I was afraid someone might recognize you. Oh. Well, I'll demand that the government drop the charges against you and Baldy. Hey, this sounds better all the time. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Did the government send a reply to the message? No, not yet. Lefty will know it if there is a re... What's the matter, Joe? Hey, I heard a creak in the floorboard in the hallway just beyond that door. Someone snooping. You keep talking. I'll catch him by surprise. Well, Joe's right. I don't know of any message that comes into the door. Oh, gee, what? Barky was snooping, huh? Hey, Joe, wait. Listen. Now, let me go. Oh, I'll blow your head off. Now, come in here. Close the door, Lefty. Right. Anyone see you grab the barkeep? No, the hall can't be seen from this cafe. Now then, barkeep, what's the idea of snooping like that, huh? How much did you hear? Well, I, I... Give me the truth. All right, Joe. I'll give it to you straight. I've been barkeep a long time. And I've learned about a lot of deals. I've always kept my mouth shut about things that didn't concern me. But this time it's different. I heard what you're planning. I thought so. You can't go through with your plans. Who says so? I do. Robbing a stagecoach is one thing. But when you plot against the government and the Lone Ranger... That's going too far. And who's to stop me? Every man in town will rear up to stop you. How'll they know about it? I suppose you plan to spread the word. Yeah. Well, thanks for telling us. Why not? You wouldn't believe me if I promised not to tell. If I had my gun, I'd make dead sure you never talked. Yeah, so would I. We'll take care of him, but not here. Lefty, lock the hall door so we won't be disturbed. Right. Cleve, you gag him. Yeah. Baldy will tie his hands. Joe, oh, don't be a fool. Let me go. Come here. The window. Leaping through the window, the barkeep smashed the glass and sash. Out of my way, I'll get him. Joe Reno had the only gun. He was not a good marksman. The barkeep zigzagged as he ran to make a more difficult target. He's still running, heading for a horse. I hit him. But he's still going. While Reno aimed through the broken window, Cleve snatched open the outer door. You missed again. Side of a barn. Give me that gun. All right, you get him. Ah, 
confounded gun is empty. You let him get away. Well, I hit him once. But you didn't stop him. Everyone in the cafe heard that shooting. They're all in the hallway. He'll bust the door down. Well, we got to clear out. Come on. Right, come on. Joe. Joe Reno led the way from the back door toward a number of horses that had been left in the moonlit space behind the cafe. Grab your horses and clear out of town. The barkeep took my horse. I don't have a horse. Take any horse. All right, come on. Get they up. see us. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Plotters made good their escape and rode at top speed until they were well beyond the edge of town. Then Joe Reno signaled a halt. Oh, 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 oh. His swarthy face was distorted by rage. That cussed snooping barkeep will tell all he knows. We better call the whole thing off. Are uh, you getting chicken hearted, Lefty? Well, no, Joe, but we can't fight the whole town. And why not? But, Joe, there's only four of us. Four of us plus over a hundred Indians. Indians? Yeah. They're renegades living in a valley north of here. They're friends of mine. They fight with us against the townsmen? I'll tell them they can loot the town when they killed off the men. And they'll jump at the chance. Now, come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. The wounded bartender had raced to the ranch of Clarabel Hornblow. In front of the house, he drew rein. Oh, oh there. Anyway. Dismounted and rapped on the door. Clarabelle. Clarabelle, open the door. Sakes alive, stop that noise. Clarabelle, I... Same footy. We're what in tarnation. Let me in. I gotta warn you. The Lone Ranger's in danger. The Lone Ranger? I know he's here, Clarabelle, wounded. Sam, you've been hurt. Your left arm is... Joey's scratch, nothing at all. Joe Reno winged me while I was getting away from the cafe. He was there with a couple of gunslingers. Lefty Lee, the telegraph man. Lefty Lee? Yeah. He spilled what he knew about that telegram you sent to Washington. Why, that flap-tongued, wing-ding sidewinder. I overheard him talking. They planned to come here and capture the Lone Ranger and the secret papers. Over my dead body. That's right. Well, Tardo, how's Lone Ranger? Him. Him sleep now. So you're Tardo. Did you hear what it said? Uh, me here. Well, if you got a spare gun, I'll stay and help you in Thunder Barton. The thunder's gone to town, but it should be back soon. You say Joe Reno come here. Him know you learn plan? Yeah, he knows it. That's why he tried to cut me down. Him know we warn him change plans. Maybe bring more men. No one in town will help him on a deal like this. Joe Reno bad Indian. Him know plenty other band Indians. Maybe bring them. Then we're going to need a lot of help. Then I'll get help. By Jupiter, I'll spread the word that the Lone Ranger's in danger, and every man in town will be here. When Thunder Martin returned to the ranch house, he found Clarabelle in a high state of excitement. Saints alive, it's time you got here. We've got trouble coming, and it may be more than we can handle. Yes, I know, Clarabelle. I met Sam on the way from town. Did he tell you about Joe Reno? Yeah, and if that no account double distilled sidewinder shows his ugly face and range my shit. Reno may bring a pack of renegade Indians to help him. Yeah, so the barkeep said. He also said he was bringing men from town to help us. Take my fancy china off of that shelf and store it in the wood box. There'll be bullets flying, and I don't want it busted. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue. Expecting gunplay when Joe Reno and his renegades attacked, Thunder Martin and Clarabelle hastily packed the precious china she had collected. Now handle that china careful, Thunder. No, it seems to me it's downright foolish to go fitty faddling with a lot of dishes at a time like this. Every one of those dishes was shipped special from the east. Now, I don't aim to have any of them smashed when those polecats start shooting. Say, Clarabelle. Why does Reno want to capture the Lone Ranger? Oh, he aims to collect ransom. Also, he wants to get his hands on some secret government papers that the Lone Ranger has. Well, uh, what's in the papers? Facts and figures about renegade armies near the border. The Lone Ranger was supposed to hand them to Colonel Blake, but he was shot before he had the chance. Oh, I see. It's that telegram that let Reno know that the Lone Ranger was here and wounded. Lefty Lee Blab. You know, I wondered how Reno knew the masked man was here. He was asking about him the other day. And Lefty told him. He's taunted with the Lone Ranger? Yeah. Poor critter. Well, why do you say that? Tonto's more worried than he likes to admit, Thunder. We need a doctor. Yeah. And the nearest sawbones is more than 50 miles away. Even if we sent for him, he wouldn't come this far to treat a wound. Well, if I went after him, he'd come. It'd take you two days to get there and at least two days to get back. By that time, well, the Lone Ranger would either be on the mend or... or there'd be no need for a doctor. Well, I'm going after the sawbones anyhow, just as soon as we take care of Reno and his pals. I wonder how many renegade redskins he'll bring. Over a hundred renegade Indians were camped in a valley some distance from the Hornblow Ranch. They were grouped around the council fire, watching curiously, while their leader talked to Joe Reno. Apart from the group, Lefty Lee stood with the two gunmen and watched. In the light of that campfire, they sure an evil-looking bunch. Those critters are evil-looking in any kind of light. A lot of darn sight rather have them fighting with me than again me. It looks like Joe is going to get what he wants. That leader is nodding his head. With that man, many men, we'll have no trouble getting the Lone Ranger. Even if the whole town is trying to defend him. Hey, Joe's finished talking. He's coming back. Hey, what's that engine saying? I don't know that lingo. Uh, look at him. Well, Chance, it's all arranged. Those Indians will follow us to attack the Horn Blow House. How'd you work it, Joe? Just as I said I would. I told them they could meet and massacre the townsmen at the Horn Blow Range. Then there'd be no one to stop them when they raided the town. Did you tell them we needed guns? Yeah, and that'll be taken care of. They got guns to spare. Good. Hey, Joe, is that their war dance? Yeah, they'll whip themselves into a wild frenzy. Then they'll be ready to ride. How long will that take? Several hours. Be about daybreak when we hit the Horn Blow Ranch. As the night advanced, the war dance continued with increasing fervor. Meanwhile, Sam Fuddy had spread word of the Lone Ranger's peril, and townsmen rallied to the defense. All right, go into the ranch house. Cactus will take care of your horses. They came to the ranch house in small groups, and Tonto met each group to explain the situation as he understood it. Maybe plenty trouble. Maybe crooks come here with bad Indians. Mm, bad Indians, huh? Yo, Reno is an Indian. Yeah, I know that, though. Uh, Tonto figures he'll bring a pack of renegades to help him. That being the case, we're not going to have more men we need. How many men are here now, Thunder? Well, sir, I figure there are about 50, Clarabelle. That's count the ones that took up firing positions in the barn. Any more men come from town? Ain't likely, Tonto. We've got just about all the able-bodied men in town. I wonder when the attack will come. Tonto, how do you figure that? Well, if Indians fight, maybe it come just before dawn. That when them attack. Well, we'll be ready for them. I hope you hombres brought plenty of a cartridge. In. Storekeeper, bring two cases. See, there's hot coffee on the stove. Any of you men want some, just help yourself. Well, oh, Tonto, have you looked in on the Lone Ranger during the past half hour? Uh, him awake. Him know what go on. It must make him feel mighty proud to know how everyone is rallied to his defense. Uh, crooks want only him, and him want a surprise. 
So Indians go away. I'd buy a jug for him. No, sirree. Well, him say, maybe that save plenty life. You tell him that every man here will be glad to lay down his life to protect the Lone Ranger. That's right, sir. Oh, say nothing to protecting the government papers. The night dragged while men waited and watched through windows on all sides of the house. Tonto spent most of the time in the small bedroom with his wounded friend. Then, just before the first light of dawn, a distant war cry was heard. Here they come! Injun! Well, bring them on. I'm ready for them. We'll show them ordinary outlaws a thing or two. Hold your fire if you see them! Anyone see them? There they are. They're approaching from the west side. Open fire. Let them have it. They're riding in a circle. They're surrounding the house. Watch for them on the east side, boys. The Indians, firing from the backs of their horses, returned the gunfire. They rode in a large circle around the house and barn. Bullets came through the open windows on all sides. The darkness made accurate gunfire difficult, but several of the Indians were hit and sent sprawling to the crowd. Clarabelle was on the firing line, handling her rifle as well as any of the men. Then Thunder Martin cried out. I'm winged. Thunder, you hit my head. Only a brush. Oh. I'll get the bad ratted cover killing polecat to fire that bullet. In the bedroom, the Lone Ranger lay awake and watching Toto, who maintained a steady gunfire through a window near the bed. The Lone Ranger could hear the cries of shock and pain as defenders in all parts of the house were struck by bullets. He knew that those men were shedding blood, offering their lives in his behalf. It seemed like an unfair price to pay for the life of one man who might die anyway. The Lone Ranger knew what the attackers wanted. They wanted him. He would surrender in spite of Tonto. He breathed a silent prayer for the strength to leave the bed and overpower his Indian friend so he could leave the besieged building. He pushed back the blanket and moved his feet to the floor. He mustered all of his pathetically meager strength to gain a sitting position on the edge of the bed. Then Tonto turned. Kim, stop it. You not get up. Tonto must, must give myself up. No, Kim, Wasabi. Now you lie back in bed. Help me. Help me out of the house. No. So, so many... Being hurt for me. Plenty time you get hurt for others. Give me strength. Lie back, Kimosabe. You lie back. Oh. Utter exhaustion assailed the Lone Ranger. You, he went limp, yes. and Sato lowered him gently to the bed, Easy, no. then covered him with the blanket. The house was filled with powder smoke. A number of men lay on the floor with wounds that had taken them out of the fight. The Indians had changed their tactics. They had dismounted and taken refuge behind rocks and trees, anything that afforded scant protection. They maintained a heavy gunfire on all sides. How you doing, Thunder? All right, Clarabelle. Those critters are moving close all the time. Yep, I noticed that. They're sneaking in to get near enough to rush the house. Uh, let him come. That'll bring him in the clear where we can see him. We'll knock him down like ten pins. Trouble is, we can't get them all. It's going to be hand-to-hand fighting before we're through. Dawn lightened the sky and casualties mounted. At least half of the men in the house had been struck by at least one bullet. A few continued to fight despite the wounds. The Indians crept nearer and nearer, using every available cover for protection. Say, great guns! You know, the critter I just hit was within ten feet of the house. I just happened to see him stick his head out from behind the water trough. They're getting mighty close. They'll rush us any minute. Say, what's that? What's what? Thought I heard a bugle. I heard it. But who in tarnation is blowing a bugle? Look! Look out this side of the house! Soldiers! See him coming over the hill! Led by Colonel Blake, a detachment of troopers charged toward the house with carbines barking. The Indians were quick to realize the hopeless odds. They abandoned the attack on the house, raced for their horses, and tried to flee. Ha, 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 ha. Look at them run! Go on, you heathen outlaws! 
Try and get away. You'll never make it. The soldiers are going right after him. I'm going outside and see if it is. I'm with you. The troopers with the captain in command raced after the fleeing savages. Colonel Blake swung his horse out of the ranks and approached the house. Clarabel and Tonto came out to meet him. Oh, oh, there. Come on, Colonel. You came just in time. Glad we were not too late. My name is Blake. You, Colonel Blake? That's right. I'm me, Tonto. And I'm Clarabel Hornblow. At that critter coming this way is Thunder Martin. Howdy, Colonel. How do you do? I hope your men will keep after those redskins and the white crooks with them. They'll all be taken into custody. Good. We'll take care of the wounded now. Come on, uh, you, man, we try find. We? Oui. You mean yourself and the Lone Ranger? How do you know? I received a dispatch from Washington. I was told the Lone Ranger was here and wounded. I was instructed to come for him. We heard the heavy gunfire and knew there was a battle, so we came in shooting. The Lone Ranger has some papers. I I know about those. I'm surprised that you know. The Lone Ranger trusted me. See, I'm the one who sent the telegram to Washington. Oh, I see. See? What's that wagon coming this way? One of our most capable army surgeons is in that wagon. With the best of equipment and medical supplies. Oh, that's plenty good. If I may go into the house, I'd like to get the, uh, the reports the Lone Ranger has for me. Uh, me go with you. Miss Hornblow, when the doctor arrives, will you send him in? I sure will. Uh, Colonel, you come like answer to prayer. I'm, I'm glad we made it, Tonto. Yep, Tonto has been mighty worried. You have, eh? Uh. Well, don't worry any longer, Tonto. The good Lord willing, we'll save you, friend. Our country needs the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.